All right, so today we're going to talk a little bit about manifolds. So in this section, I'm just going to present some basic definitions and try to give you a feel for what a, a topological manifold is. So a, a topological manifold is a Hausdorff topological space M of dimension N with a countable base such that for all X in M, there's an open neighborhood of X that is homeomorphic to an open set of Rn. Recall that a homeomorphism is just a continuous map from an initial space to a target space, and it, its inverse is also continuous. In topology, we characterize spaces up to homeomorphism. That means that two homeomorphic spaces will enjoy the same topology. So the definition of above can be thought of as conveying the notion that a topological space is locally uh, like Euclidean space. So, th so this is strictly in, in the sense of topology. It's not dealing with any other structure. Um, also, with this definition, we see that for any point in M, there's an open set U that contains that point and a map, phi, that goes from that open set to Rn. Um, and in this case, the, the pair, the map and the open set, is called a coordinate chart or just chart the set is usually called a coordinate patch or coordinate neighborhood and the map is called a coordinate map. Alright, and if we take a look at this map and we consider the component functions, these component functions are often called the local coordinates on U. So if phi of p is equal to x1 of p through xn of p, uh, these functions, x1 through xn, are called the local coordinate functions. So the next thing that we're going to do uh, before we move on is we're going to take a look at a quick example. All right, so let's try to take a look at what's going on with this. So we have some manifold m and uh, point p. And around P, we can always find some open set U. Um, we also know that um, if we try to take a look, at least locally, there should be a map phi that takes U to some open set in Rn. So here we have our point. This is phi of P. All right. and phi of P, it can be written out as phi of x1 of P through xn of p. And these component functions, x1 through xn, uh, these are referred to as uh, coordinate functions or local coordinates. All right, our next goal is to try to find a suitable way to introduce the ideas of calculus to manifolds. Now, this is going to require that we restrict to manifolds that have some additional structure to them. Inter Introducing the structure is going to require that we define a diffeomorphism between Euclidean space. And this is essentially the smooth analog of a homeomorphism. So we say, we say that a smooth diffeomorphism between open sets U and Rn and V and Rm is a bijection, a smooth bijection, uh, from U to V, whose inverse is also smooth. By saying that F is smooth, what we mean to say is that f is in c infinity of u and v, so from u to v. We should also note that this discussion could completely take place under the assumptions of ck differentiability rather than c infinity. All right, the next following series of definitions will actually spell out the smooth structure needed for uh, developing calculus. So let's start with compatibility of charts. All right, two charts, u phi alpha and v phi beta are smoothly compatible if either the intersection of u and v is empty or if the transition function is a smooth diffeomorphism between the image sets. So this transition function is defined in the following way. It is a map from the image of this intersection under phi beta to the image of this intersection under phi alpha, and it's given by the composition phi alpha inter, um, composed with phi beta inverse. All right, before we move on, we're going to try to spell out what this, what this actually means and give you an idea of, of what this is saying. So let's go ahead and let's turn to uh, an example. 
All right, so let's go ahead and let's take a look at uh, maybe let's say a manifold M. Um, and we have some open sets here, let's say um, U and V. And we wanna take a look at what this transition function is. So um, here we have the intersection of U and V. And uh, we know that U and V map down to open sets in Rn. So let's say maybe this is an open set. And um, over here we have another one, let's say maybe a little different, but another open set. And uh, these maps, we have phi alpha and phi beta. So these will be our charts. So U and V with these maps. And now let's see the intersection where it gets mapped to. Let's say on this side, this is phi beta of the intersection. Um, it'll be that spot there. And on the other side, um, maybe, maybe this here is phi alpha. So the thing that we're concerned with is a map between these two images. So this is our phi alpha beta. And phi alpha beta, it first goes up to the manifold via phi beta inverse and then comes down via uh, phi alpha. Okay, so another way to visualize this uh, is, let's say that we have U and V and, um, uh, you know what, let's go ahead and let, let's, for notation's sake, let's call these sets W1 and W2. And so these image sets, they go up to the manifold via phi beta and come back down via phi alpha. And all we're saying is that this map in between, this phi alpha beta, is a smooth diffeomorphism. Now, if the intersection U intersect phi is empty, or if this is a smooth diff uh, diffeomorphism, then these are compatible. All right, the, the next thing that we want to talk about is a smooth atlas. This is going to be the smooth structure that allows us to do calculus on manifolds. So given a topological manifold M, a smooth atlas is a collection of charts, both these open sets and transition functions, uh, that satisfy the following, the following conditions. The open sets must form an open cover of M, and any two charts have to be smoothly compatible in the sense that we just talked about. A collection of charts that cover M but aren't necessarily smoothly compatible is called an atlas. And we can say that any topological manifold has an atlas but might not necessarily have a smooth atlas. Now, using this definition, we see that it, it can be quite tedious to actually check whether or not something is a smooth atlas. And to check that something is a smooth atlas, this amounts to checking that each of these transition functions is in fact a diffeomorphism. In practice, it's often easier instead to check that they are smooth and injective. Finally, we should mention another definition. So a smooth atlas A is called maximal if it's not properly contained in any larger atlas. What this amounts to is saying that a maximal atlas is closed with respect to compatibility. That is, if u, so I if u phi is compatible with every chart in the atlas, then u phi must have already been in the atlas. So any, so now we can say that a smooth structure on a topological manifold is defined to be a maximal smooth atlas. Now using this, we can define a smooth manifold to be a pair, M and A, where M is a topological manifold and A is a smooth structure in the sense that we just defined. It turns out that every smooth atlas is contained in a unique maximal atlas and two atlases have the same smooth structure if and only if their union is a smooth atlas. So this gives a an easy criteria to decide if two atlases lead to the same smooth structure. This also means that to check that, an atl uh, that um, M is a smooth manifold, we need not find a maximal atlas. Instead, we need only find a uh, smooth atlas. As stated earlier, one could adapt all of these definitions and notions to deal with lesser degrees of differentiability. 
For instance, many authors will define CK manifolds. This amounts to requiring CK differentiability for the smooth structure. And finally, we should note that the dimension of a manifold is well defined, and in many cases will indicate this by writing M to the N rather than M. Alright, that's all for now, and I'll see you next time.